Good afternoon, Anne Arundel County. Good afternoon, America. Welcome to what is our 38th episode of Promoting Don't Get Fooled Again with Class. I'm your host, Anthony Bynum. The name of our production company is the Glen Burnie Players. These are exciting times here in Anne Arundel County. Exciting times. Now, today it was a little overcast. I thought we were going to get some snow, but I guess it's going to hold off a little bit. But still, these are exciting times. We want to start off by doing a shout out to our affiliates. We start off with our affiliates up in um, Amherst Media, which is in Western Massachusetts. And also Green Belt Cable Access, which is in PG County. So thank you all for carrying uh, the Don't Get Fooled Again. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Now, uh, as far as uh, this week's episode is concerned, we want to start right off with the uh, most admired uh, segment. So we're gonna need to go to uh, our, our screen share for that. Alex Trubeck. So Alex was born 722-1940. He died 11-8-2020. It's hard to believe that it's um, been a little over three full years since we lost Alex Trubeck. Alex was a joyous person. He challenged us as a host of Jeopardy. Uh, he hosted from its revival in 1984 until his passing in 2020. Here's a quick peek at his life. He was born in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. His dad was a hotel chef who had immigrated from the Ukraine as a child. His mom was Franco-Ontarian. Now that's a worldview. He was almost expelled from the broadcasting school he first attended. He did a short stint at the military school, but that didn't work out. At 13, he was a bellhop at the same hotel his dad worked. Now, eventually, he attended the University of Ottawa, graduating in 1961 with a degree in philosophy. And somehow, that just seems to make sense to me. He started out uh, at the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation doing every job there was to do. Um, in 1966, he hosted a high school quiz show. And, you know, like you say, uh, what is it? Was it the job? Away, and away we go. That's Jackie Gleason, right? He would probably say, yeah, away we go, right? <laughs> um, it would be years later, though, in 1973, when Alex first came to the States. His first gig was on a show called Wizard of Odds. Now, in those days, game shows were a big deal. I remember them in the early 70s. They were all over the place. In the afternoons, sometimes at nights, they were all over the place. A year later, after Wizard of Odds, uh, it was the High Rollers. Now, I remember that show, too, because they had two giant fuzzy dice. <laughs> I think that might have been a CBS product. The guy was always working. At one point, he worked... One show in the U.S. and one show in Canada, basically at the same time, speaking English when he needed to speak English, French when he needed to speak French. His biggest break, though, was when the original host of Jeopardy chose not to do the reboot. Art Fleming had some issues with how they were going to redo the show, and he decided to opt out. Now, he was a friend of Alex. Now, whether that had a role in Alex getting the job, I, I don't know. All I know is that it seemed that the show was created for Alex Trebek. Anyway, they have a new host now, um, Ken Jennings. He's okay, I guess. They have somebody else. He, she doesn't seem to get as many uh, 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 shots as she did in the beginning of it. I forget her name right now. But um, no one will forget Alex Trebek. He was the epitome of class. The epitome class so we're going to stop sharing actually what we're going to do is we're going to prepare for the next segment and now we're going to stop sharing okay so now we'd like to talk about something of consequence regarding in around county our home a friend of mine recently gave me a book called lithicum big nets i'm going to pull up the screen the uh screen share so you can take a look at it Now, this book was based on short stories that 
the author, a gentleman named Oscar Skip Booth, submitted to the LSIA monthly journal called The Monitor. LSIA stands for Lithicum Shipley Improvement Association. And they still um, publish The Monitor every month. Every month it comes out full of all kinds of neat articles. And I um, was given the pleasure of, of submitting a couple, which I'm very thankful for, uh, given that opportunity, that is. Now, in these readings, Skip go Skip's goal was to preserve the history of this town, this place in and around the county called Lithicum. I have read just about 28 pages so far, but he does this with short conversations, short but important information as to how this became that, how who became them. Uh, there are many a hero, or should I say many a regular person is noted. And we're going to use this book from time to time to help tell the story of Anne the County. I've never met Skip. He's been gone for quite some time. But I've already been touched by his warmth and his sincerity. This guy was a hero to me. That That is, I, I think what I should say is he was a hero to many people. That's probably the best way to say it. So uh, we're going to stop sharing. And we have one last thing we're going to do. Okay. Now, we always like to do a either poem or speech, but something that seems to make sense, something that seems to fit. Uh, I, the one I'm interested in this week is a famous, short, but famous speech. It's called Win One for the Gipper. Uh, I, I need to give a little background about this. So this is uh, attributed to Newt Rockney. He was a famous, famous, successful coach of Notre Dame football back in the 1920s and I think somewhat in the 1930s. Uh, they were, Notre Dame was playing Army, and it was at the halftime talk. They were losing the game. But he encouraged the team with a deathbed speech of former player, George the Gipper Gip. Now, George Gip is known as one of the greatest football players in the history of Notre Dame football. Now, it's a long time ago. It's almost, almost 100 years ago. Football's been around a long time. Here's what it says. Quote, I got to go rock. It's all right. I'm not afraid. Sometime rock. When the team is up against it, when things are wrong, the breaks are beating the boys, ask them to go in there with all they've got and win one for the Gipper. I don't know where I'll be, Rock, but I'll know about it and I'll be happy. Wow. <laughs> and they came back and won the game. <laughs> so uh, win one for the Gipper, yes. So everybody, uh, I've enjoyed our talk. For everyone here at the Glen Burnie Players, again, my name is Anthony Bynum. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>